Hello everyone, this is Abhi and welcome to the podcast session 2. Today we have Helmi Hassan from Malaysia with us, also part of Rich and Niche and let's get to know more about him and why he's here today. Hi Helmi, how are you doing? Pretty good. How's it going Abhi? It's going great. It's going great. Thank you for coming on the podcast today. So I wanted to know more about you and wanted to tell my audience about you. So can you give me a brief overview of your background, uh, highlighting the aspects that led you to digital marketing? Okay. I, I studied engineering, mechanical, has nothing to do with uh, marketing. Um, but I got laid off from, I was in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and then it didn't do so well in 2014. And I got laid off along with a lot of other people. Um, but I decided not to pursue that career path anymore because it wasn't really what I wanted to do, even though it pays a lot of money. So I came, I was working in Singapore at the time, got laid off there. So I had to return back to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And at the time I already had, uh, I already bought two properties here in Kuala Lumpur. So I had to figure out how to pay the mortgage, right? Because I don't have any job. So what I did was I started an Airbnb business. So I rented it out to tourists um, and it did really well to the point that I started with one studio, two studios, and I rented my neighbors and then sublet that to, to tourists. And then I was managing 10 studio units. It's kind of like a little guest house kind of sort of business. So I was uh, hanging out with the, the foreign uh, tourists, teaching them where to go, where to hang out, that kind of stuff. So it was, it, was, it was very fun. But after a while, the competition was getting really fierce. So that's when I started to do my own website and get people to book directly with me. So I, I saved the Airbnb fees. So I guess I had to create my own website with the booking engine. So that was my first experience uh, with digital marketing. And then I had to create an SEO article. Uh, for example, like I know a lot of digital nomads book my place. So I created content that resonates with them. So for example, 10 best cafes to do work in Kuala Lumpur, some, some stuff like that. So that was my initial entry into digital marketing. Uh, yeah. So then the... The COVID lockdown hit and then that business went bust because there's no tourists. So I had to apply for a job in digital marketing. I was a content marketing guy at Involve Asia, which is a local affiliate network company based here in Kuala Lumpur as well. So I did their website. I did their content strategy, SEO articles, a little bit of TikTok as well. Um, and I've done their uh, academy. So that's where mm -hmm. I've learned a lot for uh, digital marketing uh, skills. However, I was a jack of all trades, master of none. But I think we can cover this in the next question. So you have anything else you want to ask for the second question? Yeah. I mean, first of all, your background and the way you started from, from oil industry and then to moving on to your own business because you already owned the property. So I, it sounds to me like you had a problem and you turned that problem into opportunity with the help of digital marketing. That sounds amazing. Great. Yeah, I think so, it was more uh, of a necessity. I, I had to do it. It's not like it wasn't an option. I got to do it. <laughs> Maybe these are the situations where people actually are able to achieve something. Well, uh, talking about experience, you know, how many years have you been working in digital marketing now? And what were the key milestones in your career so far? Um, well, since I started my own business, I, I don't really count that as working in the industry. But I guess I've started since 2014. So that's a little less than 10 years on nice. off. So, but I've, I've done a lot of projects, not just one thing. So as you know, as an entrepreneur, you have to do everything. So I did websites. I've done online courses, uh, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, the whole nine yard. Yeah. But that's also an issue for me because I was a jack of all trades, master of none. I think you have to pick one thing and be really focused at that one thing. Be really good at it before you go into other stuff. So what you mean is a T-shaped skill set for a marketer is important than being a jack of all trades. Realistically, you have to know everything, quite frankly, as an entrepreneur, especially, but you want to be known for one thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 it does, it does. So to what extent have you combined your formal education? You, you mentioned about your engineering not being related to marketing, but uh, did you ever take any other course or any other formal education or you were completely self-taught in honing your digital marketing um, skills? I think YouTube helped a lot. Uh, being an engineer, when I work with clients now, I think as an engineer, you are wired to think very analytically. That's, that's your job, right? And I think that carries into me with my uh, client work. So they are quite impressed that I'm very organized, like where is the status of the project, that kind of stuff. And I'm very mm. strict to the point rather than kind of like beating around the bush like some people do. 
So that's one thing. Uh, that's the engineering part. Whatever I learned in school in engineering has nothing to do with what I do now. However, the critical aspect thinking of it may translate into uh, digital marketing. And that could be my edge as well. Um, in terms of other education, I did join a bunch of online courses. Uh, I think the first course that I bought was some guy I found from YouTube and he was talking about blogging. So that's why I started the, the website and, and started blogging because I learned from him. Um, yeah, and then that course later on uh, ventured from blogging to YouTube as well. And that's why I also started YouTube. Right, right. Great. So uh, look, looking at that, uh, can you share some experiences or methods that have significantly contributed for your growth right now in digital marketing? Any experience? Uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by any ex this, this experience? So, for example, uh, you said that your experience with Airbnb actually made you uh, understand the competition in digital marketing and then you went on to your own venture and then you learned web development or web designing and you created a, your own website for your Airbnb business, right? So what are other experiences that taught you these skills or uh, additional things that you said as an entrepreneur, you must know everything? Okay, I think starting the Airbnb business, uh, at first it was very lucrative because it was new. It was an in thing. But after like, a couple of years, a lot of people were doing the same thing. So what happened was there's a lot of competition and it reduced me to a commodity basically. So why would anybody book my place? Because there's so many other places that are cheaper, bigger, better. So I feel like the only way people want to book with me is because of an experience. That means they booked the place because of me. They want to meet the host. So that's where I learned a lot about personal branding. So meaning right. it doesn't really matter what you sell. A lot of business owners want to stay anonymous. Because whatever reason, they're ashamed, they're not ashamed, they're, they're like shy or whatever, which I don't think is a good thing. I think as an entrepreneur, you should be the face of your company. And a lot of them are a little delusional. They say, oh, I don't want, I want a faceless YouTube channel. I want, I don't want my face on my website or whatever, because it's easier to sell later. But I think that's too far-fetched because you can't even, you can't even have build an audience right now, let alone sell it later. So I think having your face, be proud of what you sell is what. Is, is the future of digital marketing. That's an amazing point. I have seen so many people talking about faceless channels and faceless this, faceless that these days. And also because of these AI tools, now they are like, don't, don't come in front of the camera and just do this, do that. People are wasting their time in the long run. If you see it in the 10 years, 15 years down the line, think they might learn a few things doing all this, but they are not building a personal brand in this process. So I completely agree with you. So yeah, uh, but to be to be fair, not everybody wants to be in, in front of the camera. Yeah. Like for me, it comes naturally. I like being the center of attention, but uh, I like to be the center of attention for a topic that is educational to other people because that yeah. brings me uh, joy. That brings me some sort of fulfillment that I'm helping somebody else's, you know, in their progress or whatever. But I don't like to be famous for doing dumb stuff, for example, on TikTok. So it really depends. But some people, they, they don't matter what it is. They just don't want to be in front of the camera. And I respect that because not everybody can be in front of the camera. I agree. I agree. So uh, talking about this, could you describe some of the clients you have worked with or some projects that stand out in terms of innovation and success to you? Yeah, I'm also still, I started with a full stack digital marketing. So I started with a website client. So funny how that turns out is I, I have 10,000 followers on Twitter, which is pretty good. So a lot of them are local here in Malaysia, where I share a lot of personal finance slash digital marketing content. At the time, that was the topic that I like to share. So I have 10,000 people follow me because of that topic. So a lot, after a while, they like that I share with them how to make money online, how to be a content creator, how to start YouTube, how to be TikTok, whatever, all this stuff. They, 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 they like because I give valuable tips there. And then uh, this one time, I just decided to do an online course. So I have an online course on my website. It's called the Content Masterclass. It's basically teaching everything I know to how to personal brand yourself as a founder or just a content creator in general and how to make money as well. So a lot of people tell you how to build an audience, but they don't tell you how to make money. So for me, I do both. Like here's how to build your, your, your personal brand and how to make money afterwards. So the cool thing about that little project, I made maybe about $2,000 sales just not bad. Uh, most of them are local buyers, but one of the buyers, uh, it, it, it's still on sale, but it's not on my website. So 
It's only when somebody asks me, hey, do you still have this? And I'll give them the link for them to buy. But I don't really openly uh, sell it because I rebrand myself to YouTube Funnels now. Anyway, going back to the guy, uh, there's one guy who bought my course out of the blue. And he really liked the course. Uh, he says that my, my video setup is all very professional. The audio is clear, all this stuff. So he's very impressed with the thing that I'm teaching and the delivery. And then he gave me a really good review on Twitter. And I got the notification. I'm like, who, who the hell is this guy right? giving me this really nice review? So I, I DM'd him and said, hey, thanks for leaving that review, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, oh, hey, uh, yeah, I, I bought your stuff. Really love it. Um, and then somehow he, ha he asked me out to hang out at a cafe, at a local cafe. So that's when I met him. We, we had coffee. And he said, oh, I actually have an auditing firm. He, he, he owns an accounting company. So he said, I really like your website. I tried to copy your website, actually. I tried to do it myself, but it didn't turn out really well. Is there anything that you can help? So I said, all right, why don't I design the whole thing for you? And then that's how I got my first client. And he's been following me for a while. So he absolutely loves my, my content. So that's another point when it comes to personal branding. A lot of your clients, I don't think, I don't, I'm not a believer of cold DMs because I don't think, personally, I don't think it works. Uh, maybe it works for you. That's fine. I'm not trying to rebuke that, but I don't do any cold DMs. All of my content, all of my clients, they inbound, they come to me. That means they follow me for a while online. They see my content. They build the trust. Then they, ha they one day like, oh, I have this problem. Oh, uh, help me. Yeah, right. Like, let's talk to that guy. So that's how I get my clients. Uh, yeah, of course, so that's they're able to relate to you. I'm saying that they're able to relate to you once they've already watched your content. They know who you are, what you do, and they, they are kind of warm uh, people already in, in your audience. Yeah, exactly. So that's the beauty. I feel like that's the future because you got, you got to think about it from your client perspective as well. If you need a website, for example, or if you need to go on YouTube, you need some guy to help you with YouTube. Just an example, right? You have two guys who, one, okay, I, for example, let's say I need a website. I, need, I have a company. I need a professional website that can get leads or whatever. Who do you want to work with? Some guy who calls the MU out of the blue or two, another guy who, you, he, who is well known for doing a bang up job, a really good job at that thing, right? I, I get a lot of cold emails every day. I never reply to any of them. But that's just me. I don't know if, it, if it's different for you. Yeah, there's, there's law of averages always existing. So maybe when you DM a few thousand people, some of them will reply and you'll get an appointment. Yeah. Maybe you close some of them. There is that yeah. process. Some people would like that's to go through that process instead of building a personal brand. Some people would like to build a personal brand. So my, my take on that is building a personal brand takes a valuable time uh, that you have to take out from your core business. And yep. also it, it takes a lot of efforts and it takes a lot of kind of emotional investment in building your brand. You must know what you stand for, what your positioning is and who you are helping exactly. And some people might not be clear about all these things when they are starting something. They are not clear about their offer. So maybe they go with whole DMs. So someone who is really clear, they can definitely go with the YouTube funnel route and build their brand and kind of think about inbound leads because that's the best type of business I personally feel there is, you know, instead of whole outreach, I, either via emails or socials. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that point. And talking about DMs and these difficulties, what are the most challenging aspects do you think about? digital marketing are because so far we have talked about the, the, the good things and what you have done and the way you got your first client. What kind of difficulties do you see there is in digital marketing career for someone who wants to get into this industry, maybe as a student or maybe as an experienced other profession? Well, there's a lot of people going into digital marketing. You need to find your niche. You need to find what you need to be known for. So if you're starting out, pick one thing that you are interested in that has market value. So if you want to do paid ads, then that go ahead with that. If you want to do YouTube, go ahead with that. If you want to do graphic design, video editing, whatever works for you, right? But you have to, I think the, the biggest thing to stand out is to create case studies. Uh, how do you help this client from here to there with your whatever unique method? and just constantly promote that every day. That's how you get clients. So at first you can work for free to get those case studies in, real clients, real results, and then you can start charging people. So if you don't have case studies, it's gonna be very, very hard. All right, so case studies means maybe working for free or maybe working for less than what you would normally charge. 
and then kind of getting that testimonial. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So the case study could be anything. It could be a paying client as well. Uh, but when you're starting out, you don't have any paid clients. Nobody wants to hire you. You don't have any social proof. So it's what I, um, you know, either I help out a friend. There's always a friend who needs a help who has a business. Or I was lucky enough to launch that course and then the, the, the inbound lead came to me. But I understand not everybody has that luxury. So I think your option is, well, find a friend who has a business who needs help. That's, that's a very good suggestion. Right. So everything's going on great with, with your career so far and you have an excellent offer that you just mentioned YouTube funnels. So what are your immediate and long-term goals in terms of that in, in your career and how do you plan to achieve them? If you can shed a light on that. Well, my long-term goal is to be, I mean, technically I'm a YouTube growth agency, but I don't like to be called an agency because it has a lot of bad connotation to it. Because if you work for an agency, it sounds very impersonal. Whereas I would say I'm more of a YouTube growth consultant than I am an agency, meaning what they get, the client get is to work with me directly, right? And yeah, if I hire some people down the line to outsource some stuff, that's none of their business. Uh, they, but ultimately, they want to work with me. I'm the consultant. So I don't like to use the word agency, but technically I am, right? Um, yeah. So, sorry, what was the question? Yeah, your future goals and long-term goals uh, and right, how yeah. would you so like to achieve I want to that? be known as the go-to guy but for any entrepreneur specifically. That means the founder wants to be, wants to build a personal brand on YouTube. So I don't work with faceless brands. So for example, like this company came up to me, hey, can you grow a YouTube channel? Like it doesn't, I mean, it's just a logo. I don't do that. I handle personal brand. The founder itself wants to be on YouTube teaching people stuff. So eventually, you know, they grow, he'll grow, he or she will grow as an authority. So that's my, right. my, my future goal. So let's say anybody who's really famous. So for example, the other day on Twitter, Ramit Sethi, I think you know who he is, like the famous personal finance guy from the US. Uh, he has a Netflix, uh, he has a show on Netflix and everything. And then one uh, yesterday, I think he just tweeted, all right, I want to take my YouTube channel seriously. Who should I call? And then a lot of people <clears throat> commenting, oh, you should contact Patty Galloway. You should contact this guy, that guy, this guy. These are all top guys in the YouTube funnel game. And obviously my name is not there, but I want, I want to be mentioned in, in that in the future. The near future, I am currently working on some clients at the moment for a little bit cheap or, and, and one is for free. So I'm a very, very busy. Uh, one is actually my friend who has 250,000 followers on, on Twitter. Really good, really big. He's in the health niche and he has a YouTube channel, um, 7,000 subscribers, but he, he's only using it as like, like he dumps his webinar there. So he's not really generating leads. So what I'm doing is I'm helping people like this who already has a channel, but not optimizing it very well. Um, and then I'm going to do something. So now it's optimized to get him more views and more leads. So that's the first guy. The second girl I, is, is somebody from my network. Um, she's doing landing pages on Twitter. She's really good. Uh, but she is, every day I, I talk about YouTube on, on Twitter. So she's like, hey, I want to do, I want to go on Twitter as well. I'm like, all right, I'm going to help you out for free. You're going to be the case study for somebody who, who has a following somewhere else, a, a large following, but then they're starting on YouTube from scratch. So these are two different scenarios. So once I get the testimony from these two guys, I think I'm rock solid. I mean, it, it's hard to, it's, it's bulletproof, really. Like people are going to look at it and forget about it. This guy is the real deal. Makes sense. So one of the last questions I have for you today is something for people to understand. How do you achieve all this, you know, whatever you are doing? So what new technologies or tools do you believe are shaping the future of digital marketing? And how do you plan to incorporate them into your practice? There's another question mixed into this one. What tools do you currently use to achieve your goals and to fulfill uh, your services to the clients? Okay, don't get too hung up on gear. Um, in my opinion, only losers care about gears. Uh, the real deal, if you're a really good personal brand, is that it doesn't really matter what you do or what you use or where you are. If people like you, they like you. All right? So drop the gear. Nobody cares about your mic. Nobody cares about what tools you use. So the focus is actually you. And uh, the fundamentals of content is basically the same. It doesn't matter what Twitter, whatever comes next. It doesn't matter. It's how to hold attention, how to get people to pay attention to you and how to persuade them to do what you want to do. That's the basic human 
emotion that you have to master. So I would like to make your question redundant. So it doesn't really matter what tool you use. Uh, that, that's an answer that was not expected. So great, great. I agree that tools are not important because they keep changing based on uh, new trends. And what stays long term is your personal brand rather than tools. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Get in front of the camera, get people to like you. They like how you talk. They like how you explain things. And people follow you because of that. Not because of some tool, not because of the mic that you use. Right? Right, right. Is there anything else that you would like to share that you would like to tell people about starting their own personal brand? Okay, uh, having, you don't need to have a website, but I think having some sort of website with your name on it, have, it will build trust, especially if you're starting out. So for example, if, if somebody never met me and then I have like helmiasan.com. So it just shows that I'm a little bit serious. You know, I'm a bit more professional. Like I'm not just some guy using all free stuff all the time. It's, it's just my personal opinion. Okay, and then when you email them, you also have something at helmiasan.com. So you look like you're taking things seriously. You're taking your business seriously. So that's one thing, website. Uh, you don't have to spend a fortune. Card.co is free if you want. What else? Going on YouTube is the best route long term, but it is also the most hardest. It is the most hard to do, quite frankly. I think a good strategy, a mix between short term and long term is Twitter and also uh, YouTube. So the Twitter, you can test a lot of stuff. You can post a lot of stuff testing your ideas, which one works. And whatever works, at the end of the week, you can visualize, oh, okay, this thing did really well. This topic did really well. Maybe I can turn this into a YouTube video. I think that would, that's what I do. Yeah, but this oh, is right. a lot of stuff for, for a newbie to do. So if you can only do one thing right now, just get on Twitter or X. Follow the people you want to follow. And instead of posting platitudes, like here are 10 AI tools. I mean, that's so boring. Anybody can write this shit. So instead of that, work on free clients and just talk about your journey. And that is the most powerful thing ever. You will get clients for sure. People DM you to help. That's the suggestion for new entrepreneurs. And you can take it. And maybe you can get in touch with Helmi later on if you want, want to know more about it. So... Talking about getting in touch, where can people find you online, Helmi? Okay, so I'm most active on Twitter at the moment. I have about 10.5K followers at this point of recording. You can find me there. It's at helmihasan underscore com. Also on uh, YouTube as well. Same thing, at helmihasan underscore com. Yeah, I'll post those links in the description below. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Helmi. It was a great session, really precise and short. And I think the message was really clear to the audience. And maybe they are learning a lot from these kind of podcasts. Now, I'll be coming up with more such guests. Uh, help me and you will definitely gain some value out of their opinions, their views, their experiences. And I'm sure that Help Me was hell of an experience starting from an engineer to a digital marketing expert helping other entrepreneurs. That's it for me today. And thank you for watching this video. Bye.